I was born in Paris in 1960 and uh, I was introduced to music by my family, my uncles, my parents who listened to jazz and classical music. I took piano lessons from the age of seven but didn't go very far in uh, the academic way because I stopped taking lessons when I was like nine or ten. self-taught and uh, so I discovered jazz and classical music at the same time when I was a kid and I'm still in love with both musics and uh, I have learned jazz the way people learn at the time listening to recordings playing with people you know and uh, slowly but surely I fell in love more and more with music and I discovered at a pretty late age I would say 25 26 that's that's really the only thing I wanted to do I had a job, so I quit my job. I became a musician, and uh, then later, a little bit later, I moved to New York in 1994, and I spent uh, 20 years over there. And now I'm in Montreal. I am a professor of music at McGill University, and I keep playing the piano, which is the thing that I love to do and compose, of course. <laughs> There's, to me, there's good musicians and musicians I don't like. You know, I don't make a difference. European American, it's boring. It's, everybody talks about those things. It's not interesting. Sometimes, you know, people tend to think that there is a, it's a science, that you need, need to learn theory and stuff like that. But the greatest improvisers, like people like Errol Garner, for example, were completely self-taught, they just improvise from here, from with their ears. I think the thing that you need to have when you improvise is a great pair of ears hear everything that's going on, hear the music, hear all the other instruments that you play with and really let your instinct guide you and then you know of course you practice, you work but I think the most important thing is to do it, to improvise at home every day, to improvise with other musicians develop your ear, develop your instincts and that's how I learned, you know, it's really like a language it's like when you learn your language, you know, it's the same it's really like learning to speak, to me that's what it is some people are more gifted than some others, you know, for example, uh, there are things that I'm sure I'm not very gifted at, I, I'm not like a great, uh, great at drawing, uh, I'm not a fantastic chess player, and, uh, you know, there are some things that we are better, naturally better at than some others. But I think some, some people are really naturally gifted for speaking the language of music, you know, and those people really can improvise, you know, I think that's... Of course, at some, in some degree it's a gift, but I think it's a lot of, of doing it, you know, anybody can really talk you know, as long as you learn the language. So I think many people who think they cannot improvise actually could, you know, but they would have to start from a young age and do it, do it again and again. And that's how you learn, really. You mean Beethoven didn't know any jazz standard and he improvised on the piano? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, jazz was not born yet, you know, so jazz and improvisation. Improvisation exists in centuries, you know, way before jazz existed. And 
And some people who play jazz, they don't really improvise, they just play algorithmic stuff on chord progression. It's not real improvisation, you know, they just have those uh, patterns in their head, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's improvisation. Improvisation exists since many, many years. Chopin improvised, Schubert improvised, great classical musician improvised, great classical composers. Improvisation is a general thing, it's just the act of speaking music. Jazz is a certain language. It's like you ask me, can you speak if you don't speak French? Of course. You can speak English, you can speak Cantonese, you can speak Mandarin, you can speak German, etc. So you can improvise without playing jazz, same as you can speak French. You can speak, sorry, without speaking French. Jazz is, is a language and improvisation is just the act of speaking music in the moment. So that's the difference. Listen to it. You don't learn music by going in a school. You can, you can. I mean, schools have good. I work in a school. I'm not teaching in a school. You know, and there are some good, great things you know, that are being done. But you learn music by listening to it, by falling in love with it. The way I learned music was by falling in love with it. It's like life. If if you want to know how can I learn life or how can I learn love. And somebody tells you you have to go to a school, you're gonna be like, I'm crazy, I mean, you know, life, love, you know, you, you learn by life. Music is the same, you listen to music, you fall in love with it. I fell in love with Beethoven, with Charlie Parker, with big spider baker by listening to them. And that's how I learned almost everything I know. So for a young musician, I would say, do that. Listen to music, listen to music, love music, fall in love with music. Go to your instrument and try to play what you just heard. And then later, you can go to a school to develop that. But that is the starting point, that is the engine, that's the fire. If there is no fire, there will be no heat. And you cannot create heat artificially. The heat has to be there. That's the love of the music, and by listening to music, listening to music is the only way you can learn that. <laughs>